Hey folks, I know I am just an old guy telling stories, but please leave a like and subscribe before we start. Let's enjoy in today's stories. Hey Reddit, I'm 19 years old and I recently had an experience that I can't shake off. I feel like I need to share it with someone, and maybe you guys can help me make sense of it. So here goes. Last weekend, I had a pretty awesome day with my friends at the local aqua park. We spent hours there, racing down slides, floating in the lazy river, and generally just soaking up the sun. By the time we left, we were all exhausted but happy. I got home around 9 p.m., still feeling the adrenaline from all the water fun. My parents were out of town for the weekend, so I had the house to myself. With nothing much to do and a bit too much energy to just crash immediately, I decided to indulge in one of my more secretive hobbies, browsing the dark web. I know, I know, it sounds sketchy, but I've been exploring the hidden parts of the internet for a couple of years now. Nothing too crazy, just forums, weird marketplaces, and some obscure information. Nothing bad has ever happened to me. It's mostly just been a curiosity thing. So I booted up my laptop, connected to my VPN, and fired up Tor. The familiar, somewhat ominous black screen of the Tor browser always gives me a little thrill. There's something about knowing you're diving into the unknown that's exciting and a bit creepy. As usual, I started with some of the dark web directories, just clicking through random links to see where they would take me. It's like a twisted version of a treasure hunt, where you never know if you'll find something interesting or just another dead end. Hours went by as I surfed through the layers of the dark web. I came across the usual assortment of oddities, conspiracy theories that made no sense, marketplaces selling illegal goods, and forums full of people discussing topics that ranged from the bizarre to the downright disturbing. It's strange how normal all of this can start to feel after you've been browsing for a while. Around midnight, just as I was considering calling it a night, I stumbled upon a site I hadn't seen before. The homepage was unremarkable, just a plain black background with a list of links. Nothing particularly stood out, but there was something about it that piqued my interest. Maybe it was the simplicity, or maybe I was just too tired to think straight, but I clicked on one of the links titled Hidden Truths. The page that loaded was strange. It had a minimalist design with white text on a black background, and it seemed to be a collection of photos and documents. I started scrolling through, and at first it was the usual stuff you might expect. Blurry photos of supposed UFO sightings, grainy images of mythical creatures, and old newspaper clippings about bizarre events. It was kind of like a dark web version of a tabloid, but with an unsettling edge to it. As I kept scrolling, the content started to get weirder. There were photos of people that looked like they'd been taken without their knowledge. Candid shots in public places, often with the subjects looking paranoid as if they felt they were being watched. It was creepy, but again, not entirely unexpected for the dark web. But then, I saw something that made my blood run cold, and that's where I'll leave it for now. I need some time to gather my thoughts before I continue. Hey Reddit, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. What I saw next on that dark web page shook me to my core and I need to get it off my chest. So, there I was, scrolling through this eerie collection of photos and documents. My tired mind was numb from hours of surfing but I was still curious, still searching for something, anything, that would stand out from the usual weirdness. And then, I found it. At first, it looked like another one of those candid photos. It was slightly out of focus, the kind of picture you'd take in a rush, without the subject's knowledge. But something about this one felt different. The setting was a small, nondescript room, with a single window casting a dim light. There was a man in the center of the photo sitting at a table, looking down at something out of frame. His face was partially obscured, but there was something unnervingly familiar about him. I leaned in closer to my screen, squinting to make out the details. The man was dressed in a plain shirt and jeans, nothing remarkable. But it was the way he held himself, the way his shoulders hunched and his head bowed. 
that sent a chill down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that I knew him. I scrolled down a bit further, my heart pounding in my chest. And then, there it was, a clear shot of his face. I froze. It was my father. I stared at the screen, my mind racing. It didn't make any sense. My father was gone because of a car crash a few years ago. I attended his funeral. There was no way this could be him. And yet, the man in the photo was unmistakably my dad. For a few moments I just sat there, unable to move or think. The image on the screen seemed to mock me, daring me to make sense of it. My rational mind tried to come up with explanations. Maybe it was a coincidence. Maybe the man just looked like my father. But deep down, I knew it was him. I kept scrolling, hoping to find some context, some explanation for what I was seeing. The photos continued, each one more unsettling than the last. They showed my father in different settings, walking down a street, sitting in a park, entering a building, always alone, always looking over his shoulder as if he knew he was being watched. The timestamps on the photos were recent, all taken within the last year. How could this be possible? My father was supposed to be dead. The more I looked, the less sense it made, and the more terrified I became. I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to shut down my laptop and pretend I had never seen any of this. But another part of me needed to know more. I needed to understand what was happening, why these photos existed, and who had taken them. After what felt like an eternity, I finally closed the browser and leaned back in my chair. My mind was a whirlwind of confusion and fear. This wasn't something I could just brush off or ignore. I had to find out the truth, no matter how disturbing it might be. I spent the rest of the night tossing and turning, my thoughts racing with questions and possibilities. By morning, I had made up my mind. I needed to talk to my mom. She had to know something about this. Maybe there was a logical explanation, something that would make sense of this nightmare. But deep down, I knew that whatever the truth was, it wasn't going to be easy to hear. And that's where I'll leave it for now. I need some time to gather my thoughts again before I continue because I really am confused. Hey Reddit, I'm back again. Thanks for your patience and all the supportive messages. This next part is where things get even more twisted and I'm struggling to make sense of it all. So, the next morning I barely slept. My mind kept replaying those images of my dad on that creepy website. I kept questioning what I had seen, wondering if it was just some cruel joke or a bizarre coincidence, but deep down, I knew that I had to dig deeper. I waited until my mom was awake and had her morning coffee. Approaching her about something like this wasn't going to be easy. She was still grieving, and even though it had been a few years since my dad's accident, the pain was still fresh for both of us. As she sat at the kitchen table sipping her coffee and reading the newspaper, I took a deep breath and sat down across from her. Mom, can we talk for a minute? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. She looked up, sensing my seriousness. Of course, honey, what's on your mind? I hesitated, unsure of how to start. Last night I was on the internet, and I came across something strange. Something about Dad. Her face immediately changed, her eyes narrowing with concern. What do you mean? What did you find? I took another deep breath and told her everything. How I had been browsing the dark web. How I stumbled upon the website, and the photos I had seen. As I spoke, her expression shifted from concern to something much darker. When I finished, there was a long, heavy silence. Mom, do you know anything about this? Why would there be recent photos of Dad? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. For a moment, she just stared at me, her eyes wide and unblinking. Then her expression hardened, and she slammed her coffee mug down on the table, causing me to jump. You shouldn't have been looking at that stuff, she snapped. The dark web is dangerous. You have no idea what kind of people are out there. Her reaction shocked me. My mom was usually calm and composed, but now she looked genuinely angry and scared. But mom, this is dad we're talking about. I need to know what's going on. 
She stood up abruptly, her chair scraping loudly against the floor. Don't put your nose where it doesn't belong, she shouted. This isn't something you should be messing with. Leave it alone. Do you hear me? I was stunned. My mom had never yelled at me like that before. But why? What aren't you telling me? I pleaded, feeling a surge of desperation. She just shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. Just drop it. Please, for your own sake, don't ask any more questions. With that, she stormed out of the kitchen, leaving me sitting there, confused and shaken. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. My mom's reaction had only deepened the mystery, and now I was more determined than ever to find out the truth. Over the next few days, I tried to act normal, but the tension between my mom and me was palpable. Every time I thought about bringing it up again, I remembered the look on her face and thought better of it. But I couldn't let it go. I needed answers. And that's where I'll leave it for now. I need some time to process everything before I continue. Thanks for listening. Hey Reddit, I'm back again. Thanks for your patience and support. Here's what happened next, and trust me, it only gets more confusing from here. After my mom's explosive reaction, I felt lost and confused. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that I couldn't let it go. There was something deeply wrong here, something that my mom was hiding from me. And the only way to get to the bottom of it was to keep digging. I spent the next few days obsessing over the photos I had found. I went back to the dark web, trying to find the website again, but it seemed to have disappeared. Every link I tried led to dead ends or 404 errors. It was as if the site had never existed. This only fueled my determination. Someone didn't want me to see those pictures, and I needed to know why. One night, after another failed attempt to find the site, I decided to do something I hadn't done in years. I went into my dad's old study. My mom had left it mostly untouched since his death. It was like a time capsule of his life, books, papers, and his old computer, all gathering dust. I turned on the computer, half expecting it not to work, but it booted up with a familiar hum. I started going through his files, hoping to find something that might explain the photos. Most of it was mundane, work documents, emails, and family photos. But then, hidden deep within a folder labeled miscellaneous, I found something that made my heart stop. It was a series of encrypted files with strange names, strings of random letters and numbers. I had no idea how to open them, but I knew they were important. I copied them onto a flash drive and decided to take them to someone who might be able to help. The next day I skipped my classes and went to see an old friend of mine, Jake, who was a bit of a tech whiz. He'd always been good with computers and I hoped he could decrypt the files for me. When I showed up at his apartment, he was surprised but agreed to help. We spent hours working on those files. Jake had to use some pretty advanced software to try and crack the encryption and even then, it wasn't easy. Despite our best efforts, we couldn't decrypt them. The files remained locked, their secrets hidden from us. I thanked Jake for his help and left, feeling more frustrated and confused than ever. The encrypted files had to contain something important, something related to those photos, but without being able to open them, I was stuck. When I got home, my mom was in the kitchen preparing dinner. I decided it was time to confront her again, this time with the files. Mom, I found something in Dad's study, I said, pulling out the flash drive. There are encrypted files on his computer. Do you know anything about them? She looked at the flash drive and then back at me, her face pale. I don't know what you're talking about, she said quickly, too quickly. Mom, please, this is important. Those photos I found, they're of Dad, and now these files. I need to know what's going on. She shook her head, her eyes avoiding mine. I told you to leave it alone, and I meant it. Your father's gone, and digging into this won't bring him back. But why are you so scared? Why won't you tell me anything? I pleaded, my frustration boiling over. I don't know anything about it, she snapped, turning away from me. But I could see the fear in her eyes, the way her hands trembled as she gripped the countertop. I stood there for a moment, my heart pounding. She was lying. 
I could see it in her face. She knew something, something she was too afraid to tell me. But no matter how much I pushed, I knew I wouldn't get any more out of her tonight. Feeling defeated, I went back to my room, my mind racing with questions and doubts. Why was my mom so scared? What were in those files? And why couldn't we decrypt them? And most importantly, what had my dad been involved in that led to those photos? That's all I can handle for now, Reddit. I need some time again to process everything before I continue. Thanks for listening. Hey Reddit, I'm back for the final part of my story. Thanks for sticking with me through this confusing and unsettling journey. Here's where things stand now, and I need your advice. After my failed attempt to get answers from my mom, I was left with more questions than ever. The encrypted files on my dad's computer, the photos on that dark website, and my mom's clear but unspoken fear all pointed to something big, something that I couldn't ignore. But with no way to crack the files and my mom refusing to talk, I was stuck. So I decided to turn to you, Reddit, to see if anyone could help me make sense of this mess. Here's a quick recap of everything. Dark Web Photos While browsing the dark web, I stumbled upon a site with recent photos of my dad, who died a few years ago in a car crash. The photos showed him in various locations, always looking over his shoulder, like he knew he was being watched. Mom's Reaction When I confronted my mom about the photos, she got incredibly angry and scared, telling me to leave it alone. She refused to answer any of my questions and just kept insisting I drop it. Encrypted Files I found a series of encrypted files on my dad's old computer. Despite my friend Jake's best efforts, we couldn't decrypt them. They seem to be important, but without being able to open them, I'm stuck. Mom's Lies When I asked my mom about the encrypted files, she denied knowing anything. But I could tell she was lying. Her fear was palpable, and it's clear she knows more than she's letting on. I'm reaching out to you all because I don't know where else to turn. Here are some questions I've been wrestling with. Why were there recent photos of my dad on the dark web? Could it be possible that he faked his death and is still alive somewhere? Or is there another explanation for the photos? What's in the encrypted files? Are there any tools or techniques we might have missed that could help us decrypt them? Is there anyone here who's a tech expert and might be able to assist? Why is my mom so scared? She clearly knows something, but what could be so terrifying that she refuses to talk about it, even to me? Could my dad have been involved in something that put him and our family at risk? I've ruled out dangerous activities for now, but is there another explanation that could make sense? I'm honestly at a loss here. This whole situation feels like a twisted puzzle with missing pieces, and I'm desperate for any kind of clarity. Any advice, theories, or suggestions you can offer would be greatly appreciated. I just want to understand what happened to my dad and why my mom is so scared. Thanks for taking the time to read my story. I'm hoping that with your help, I can start to piece together the truth and find some peace of mind. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect this to blow up. Thanks for all the responses and theories. I'm going to sift through your suggestions and see what I can do next. I'll keep you all updated as I uncover more. Please keep the ideas coming. To be continued. Hopefully with some answers. Hey everyone, my name is David. This is something that happened to me a few years ago during one of those lazy, endless summer breaks. You know the kind. School was out. My friends were all on family vacations. And I had way too much free time on my hands. I was 15 restless and hungry for something more exciting than the typical summer fare of video games and Netflix binges. I spent a lot of time online, surfing through forums and chat rooms, looking for anything to break the monotony. One afternoon, while aimlessly scrolling through Reddit, I came across a thread about the dark web. I'd heard of it before, mostly in the context of illegal activities. But this post painted it in a different light. 
It described it as a place full of hidden corners and strange experiences, a digital frontier where you could find the unexpected and the bizarre. Being a typical teenager, I wasn't interested in anything illegal or dangerous. I just wanted to explore, to feel that rush of adrenaline from doing something a little risky, a bit out of the ordinary. It seemed like the perfect way to kill time and inject some excitement into my otherwise dull summer. After a bit of research and several how-to guides later, I found myself setting up Tor, the special browser needed to access the dark web. It felt almost like preparing for a journey to another world. I remember the nervous excitement building up as I clicked through the steps, making sure I was as anonymous and secure as possible. I created a new username, Black Crow 23, and with a deep breath, I plunged in. The dark web was strange. Unlike the clean, polished sites I was used to, it felt like a labyrinth of half-broken links and cryptic pages. It took a while to get my bearings, but I started to find my way around. I visited a few forums and marketplaces, steering clear of anything that looked too shady. My heart pounded every time I clicked on a new link, half expecting to find something horrifying but mostly it was just mundane stuff. Conspiracy theories, amateur hackers showing off odd bits of digital graffiti. Eventually I found a chat room. It looked pretty normal, just a bunch of people talking about random things, movies, games, music. I decided to join in, figuring it was a safe enough way to dip my toes into the dark web's social scene. I spent a few hours chatting with different people, none of it very memorable, just a way to pass the time. It was all surprisingly tame, and a part of me was a little disappointed. I wanted something thrilling, but not too dangerous, just enough to give me a story to tell when school started up again. Little did I know, my wish was about to be granted in the worst possible way. That's where it all began. I didn't know it then, but this innocent curiosity, this idle boredom, was about to open a door I would later wish had stayed closed. What followed was something that would haunt me for years to come. But at that moment, it just felt like a harmless adventure. Stay tuned for the next part of my story. I promise, it only gets stranger and more unsettling from here. So after a few days of wandering aimlessly through the dark web, I settled into a routine. I'd log on in the afternoons when the house was quiet and my parents were at work. It became a strange sort of ritual. Boot up the computer, fire up Tor, and dive into the shadowy corners of the internet. One afternoon, I found myself in a particularly busy chat room. The conversation was lively, filled with the usual mix of random topics. That's when I noticed a user named Joker22. His username stood out not just because of the obvious Batman reference, but because he seemed to be everywhere in the chat, engaging with nearly everyone. Curious, I decided to strike up a conversation. I sent a private message. Hey, Joker22, what's up? To my surprise, he responded almost immediately. Hey, Black Crow 23 just the usual. Killing time. You? We started chatting casually. He seemed like an ordinary guy probably around my age. We talked about our favorite movies, music, and games. It was nothing significant, just the kind of small talk you'd have with anyone online. Despite the setting, it felt oddly normal, almost comforting. Over the next few days, I found myself looking forward to our chats. There was something intriguing about talking to someone on the dark web. Even if the conversations themselves were mundane, it was like having a pen pal in a strange secret world. One evening, our conversation took a slightly different turn. Joker212 mentioned he was feeling a bit down. I guess I'm just lonely, he typed. Don't have a lot of friends in real life. I sympathized. I knew what it was like to feel isolated, especially during the summer when everyone seemed to be off having adventures. Yeah, I get that. It's tough sometimes. Thanks, Black Crow. It's good to talk to someone who understands. That was the extent of it. No deep revelations, no alarming confessions, just a brief moment of connection in the vast anonymity of the dark web. 
We talked a bit more before I logged off for the night, feeling a strange mix of satisfaction and unease. Looking back, I should have paid more attention to that unease. There was something off about Joker 212, something I couldn't quite put my finger on, but at the time, I brushed it off. After all, it was just harmless chat with a stranger online, right? Little did I know that seemingly innocuous connection was about to take a dark and disturbing turn. Stay tuned for part three, where things start to get really creepy. I promise, this is where the story takes a twist you won't see coming. A few days passed since my last chat with Joker22. Life at home was the same old routine, quiet and uneventful. My parents were out of town for the weekend, leaving me alone in the house. I took full advantage of it, playing video games late into the night and sleeping in as long as I wanted. It was Saturday afternoon when the doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, so I figured it was just a delivery or maybe one of the neighbors. I pulled myself off the couch, still in my pajamas, and shuffled to the door. As I opened it, I was greeted by a sight that made my blood run cold. Standing there was an older man, probably in his late fifties, with greasy, unkempt hair and a haggard face. His eyes were wild, darting around as if he was searching for something. He looked out of place like he had crawled out of some forgotten corner of the city. I forced a polite smile, trying to mask my discomfort. Hello, can I help you? I asked, hoping he was just lost. The man's gaze locked onto mine, and a slow, unsettling smile spread across his face. I'm looking for Black Crow 23, he said, his voice raspy and uneven. For a moment, I felt like my heart had stopped. My mind raced, trying to comprehend what he had just said. That was my username, the one I used on the dark web chat rooms. How could this stranger know that? What the hell are you talking about? Black Crows? Are you crazy? I tried to keep my voice steady, playing dumb in the hopes he would leave. The man's smile widened, revealing yellowed teeth. It's me, Joker Tutu. I know you're Black Crow 23. Panic surged through me. This was no coincidence. This man, this creepy, deranged man, had somehow found me. I glanced around, desperate for any sign of help, but the street was empty. Go away or I'll call the cops, I said, my voice trembling despite my best efforts to stay calm. I slammed the door shut and locked it, my hands shaking uncontrollably. For a few minutes I stood there listening. I could hear his footsteps shuffling away, but I didn't dare move until I was certain he was gone. When I finally peered through the peephole, the street was empty again. I backed away from the door, my mind racing. How had he found me? I thought I was careful, anonymous. The fear gnawed at me, making it hard to think straight. I double-checked all the locks and windows, then retreated to my room, where I could at least feel somewhat safe. That night, I barely slept. Every creak of the house, every rustle outside made my heart jump. I kept my phone close, ready to call for help at any sign of danger. But the night passed without incident, and eventually, exhaustion claimed me. In the morning light, the terror of the previous day seemed almost unreal, like a bad dream. But I knew it was real. I had seen him, heard his voice, and he knew who I was. I decided to stay inside for the rest of the weekend, keeping all the doors and windows locked. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, the paranoia that any moment he might come back. I thought about telling my parents, but what could I say? That I had been careless and now some stranger from the dark web knew where I lived? No, I had to handle this on my own. Or so I thought. The worst was yet to come. Stay tuned for part four where the situation takes an even more terrifying turn. This is far from over. After that terrifying encounter, I did my best to avoid any further contact with the dark web. I deleted Tor from my computer, removed any trace of my dark web activities, and even stopped visiting some of my regular forums just in case. But the fear lingered, a constant gnawing presence at the back of my mind. A few days later, 
I ventured out of the house for the first time since the incident. I needed to buy groceries, and staying cooped up inside was starting to drive me crazy. I decided to go to the local supermarket, trying to convince myself that everything would be fine. The supermarket was only a short walk from my house. I kept my head down, moving quickly, and trying not to draw any attention to myself. As I entered the store, I took a deep breath, hoping to shake off the anxiety that had become my constant companion. I was in the cereal aisle when I felt it, that unmistakable sensation of being watched. My skin prickled and I glanced around nervously. There at the end of the aisle was the same man, Joker 212. He was standing casually pretending to examine a box of cereal, but his eyes were fixed on me. Panic surged through me and I gripped the shopping cart tightly, my knuckles turning white. I couldn't believe he was here, following me. My heart pounded in my chest and I knew I had to confront him to make it clear that this had to stop. Summoning every ounce of courage, I abandoned my cart and marched straight up to him. My voice was shaky, but I tried to sound authoritative. What the hell is your problem? Go away, or this time I am calling the cops. He looked up at me and for a moment I saw something in his eyes that chilled me to the bone. It wasn't anger or malice, but a deep, unsettling loneliness. I'm lonely, he said simply, his voice almost pleading. I felt a pang of sympathy but it was quickly overshadowed by fear and anger. I don't care, I snapped. You need to leave me alone. If I see you again, I will call the police. His expression didn't change, but he gave a small nod. Okay, he said quietly. I'll go. I watched as he turned and walked away, disappearing into the maze of aisles. My heart was still racing, but I felt a small sense of relief. Maybe this was it. Maybe he would finally leave me alone. I finished my shopping as quickly as possible, constantly glancing over my shoulder to make sure he wasn't following me. The whole way home, I kept my eyes peeled for any sign of him, but he was nowhere to be seen. For the next few days, I was on high alert. Every time I stepped outside, I scanned the area looking for any hint of Joker 2 and 12, but there was nothing. It was as if he had vanished completely. Slowly, I began to relax. I convinced myself that my confrontation had worked, that he had finally gotten the message and moved on. Life started to return to normal, and the fear that had gripped me began to fade. But the dark web was no longer an adventure, no longer a thrill. It was a reminder of how easily a harmless curiosity could spiral into something terrifying. I had learned my lesson and I knew I would never go back. Stay tuned for part five, where I reflect on the experience and share a warning about the dark web. This story isn't just about what happened to me, it's a warning story for anyone thinking about exploring the dark corners of the internet, or in other words, the deep web. Weeks turned into months and the memory of Joker 212 began to fade into the background of my life. The fear that had once gripped me slowly loosened its hold, and I started to feel normal again. School resumed, and the hustle and bustle of daily routines took over. It was almost as if that strange and terrifying summer had been nothing more than a bad dream. But the lessons I learned stayed with me. I became more cautious online always thinking twice before engaging with strangers, always aware of the potential dangers lurking behind a seemingly harmless screen name. I never saw Joker 212 again. I don't know what happened to him. And frankly, I hope I never find out. The last encounter in the supermarket was the final chapter of that unsettling experience, but its impact lingered. I had been lucky. Things could have ended much worse. In the months that followed, I did a lot of thinking about what had happened. The dark web, with its allure of mystery and danger, had seemed like a thrilling adventure at the time. But the reality was far different. It was a place where anonymity could turn sinister, where the line between the virtual and the real world could blur in terrifying ways. I realized that the dark web isn't just a playground for hackers and criminals. It's a place where lost and lonely people, like Joker 212, 
can find themselves spiraling into darker and darker places. My encounter with him taught me that not everyone on the other side of the screen is as harmless as they might seem. The internet, especially its hidden corners, is a powerful tool, but it's also a place where the vulnerable and the desperate can become dangerous. So here's my warning to anyone thinking about diving into the dark web out of curiosity or boredom. Don't. It's not worth the risk. You might think you're just looking for a thrill, a way to kill time, but you never know who you might encounter or what kind of trouble you could invite into your life. The dark web is a labyrinth of shadows, and sometimes those shadows can follow you into the light. If you're still tempted, at least take every precaution. Stay anonymous, stay alert, and most importantly, know when to walk away. The thrill of the unknown isn't worth sacrificing your safety or your peace of mind. As for me, I've moved on. I still use the internet, of course, but I stay far away from the dark web. I've learned to appreciate the everyday thrills of life, the kind that don't come with the risk of a stranger showing up at your door. To those who've read this far, thank you. I hope my story serves as a reminder of the dangers that lurk just a few clicks away. Stay safe out there, and remember, sometimes the real world is thrilling enough.